The HODL tax is another reason to self-custody your Bitcoin. I wasn't aware of this, so I brought in everyone's favorite crypto CPA, Sheehan Chandrasekara, to the show to explain. So Sheehan, welcome back. Yeah, great to be here again. Before we get into that, can you just give us a quick refresher so everybody knows? First of all, I'm going to ask you this. What is a taxable event? What's the difference between short and long-term capital, capital gains? And then also there's one called a net investment income tax. So just real quick, Xi'an, could you just kind of go through like what is an actual taxable event in crypto so people know? Yeah. So in, in general for crypto, um, there are five taxable events. Uh, by the way, this has nothing to do with the ETF. This is right, just right, general right. crypto. Uh, so number one, just cashing out, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You had Bitcoin, you sold it at, uh, for a profit for cash. You got to pay taxes. Sure. Uh, number two, when you exchange one coin or NFT with another coin or NFT, uh, the IRS does not care if you receive cash or not. You still have to pay taxes if that first coin has appreciated in value at the time you're exchanging it to the, the next coin. Okay. Uh, number three, when you spend cryptocurrency or even NFTs to buy goods and services, that triggers a taxable event. Um, Number four is when you earn cryptocurrencies, you know, you can earn cryptocurrencies through like, you know, mining, um, staking, um, employment income, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera. Those are taxable. Uh, the last one is crypto specific events. Like sometimes you get new coins as a result of an airdrop or a hard fork and, and those coins are taxed at the time you receive them based on the fair market value. So those are the five taxable events. Gotcha. Okay. So that is just the basics of basics. Let's talk about short and long-term capital gains. Cause you put this up and of course people look at this and they're like, what is this? Do I have to pay this much taxes? So just real quick difference between short and long-term and what are the brackets here in the United States? Now for, of course, we can't cover all the different countries that are out there, but this is a general term and uh, this is just for the U S. Yeah. So at a high level, uh, what determines uh, whether something is short term or long term is the holding period. In simple terms, that means how much you're keeping an ETF share or, or a coin or, or a stock. Mm -hmm. So if you were to buy something and sell after holding it for less than 12 months, the resulting profit results in what's called short term capital gains. And those gains are subject to these tax rates based on your filing status and uh, and the income levels. So let's say, for example, um, you made fifty thousand dollars worth of short term capital gains. Nice. So so you got to kind of follow the chart. So fifty thousand kind of uh, in that third row. So that fifty thousand is going to be subject to uh, assuming you're a single filer. That's going to be subject to twenty two percent tax rate. Um, so that's kind of how how it works. Gotcha. So like from like, from if I make 50,000, not a bad. Uh, so this is a progressive tax, right? So from zero to 11,000, I'm paying X amount. Correct. 11,000, 44,000, I'm paying 12. And 44 to that, I'm paying 22. It's not like when I get to 44,000, I'm immediately paying 22%. So I know some people sometimes have that question, but we have a progressive tax. Now let's talk. Yeah. So just to, just to, just to clarify, so, so, the the twenty two percent uh, the rate is going to be applied to whatever the difference between fifty thousand minus forty four seven two five. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Good clarification. So that would be the uh, short term. Let's talk about long term. Yeah. So the long term uh, capital gains apply when you sell something for a profit after holding it for more than twelve months. Um, so there are three tax rates uh, for these profits to be subject to. Uh, 0%, 15%, and 20%. Uh, by the way, a lot of people are not aware of this 0% you know, tax rate. And um, it, it, it's something that you can use if you kind of meet the qualifications. Uh, let's do like another example here. So uh, let's say uh, $50,000, like in our previous example, in this case, it's a long-term capital gain. Um, in in this scenario, that entire fifty thousand is going to be subject to a, a flat fifteen percent tax rate, um, mm -hmm. because because these rates are kind of work very, a little bit different compared to the, the previous chart. Um, mm -hmm. And gotcha. and by the way, so so the in order for you to get the zero percent rate, like your entire taxable income for the year has to be less than like forty four six two five. You're like a single person. So let's say for example. You had one year, all you had was like, you know, $40,000 worth of long-term Bitcoin stock or ETF gains. 
that's going to be subject to zero percent tax rates, meaning you don't have to pay any taxes. Well, thank uh, God for small wonders. Only forty thousand to live <laughs> on. Yeah. Yeah, only forty thousand to live on. But if you really think about it, that's probably equivalent to a sixty, sixty-five thousand uh, dollar W two income, right? Because mm. because you're not paying taxes. Like if you like if you have like a sixty-two thousand, sixty-five thousand dollar W two job, your actual cash inflow is probably going to be somewhere around forty to forty-five thousand. Uh, like that's actually what hitting your bank account. So that is very true. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could be okay, you know, living around thirty seven hundred to four thousand dollars a month, just going from there. I mean, of course, it'd be forty eight thousand, but yeah, let's just say thirty five. I could do that. So there's that piece. Now let's talk about the NIIT, the Net Investment Income Tax. What exactly is this here? Yeah. So so we spoke about uh, short term capital gains and long term capital gains. Yeah. And in any given year, if your uh, uh, total income, but as a matter of fact, it's called the modified gross adjusted income. Mm -hmm. exceeds um, any of these thresholds, you had to pay an additional 3.8% tax on top of your capital gain tax. Mm. So going with our example before, so you had $50,000 worth of, you know, could be short term or long term. Uh, but for the entire year, you made like, you know, half a million dollars because you're high net worth individuals and uh, that half million dollar could come from wages or business income or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in that case, that fifty thousand is uh, is subject to their short term or long term capital gain taxes we spoke about, plus this additional three point eight percent tax. Ah, fun times. Good, love taxes. So now that'll leave us to our last point, which is one that I had a question on, which was these fund expenses, because this is all from the Bitcoin ETF and the different institutions that are offering those services, the Black Rocks and the Fidelities and things like that. There is a a fund expense. So could you kind of walk us through this? Because that's for the people who right now are going, okay, I'm just going to do a Bitcoin ETF, but I haven't sold anything. So how does this work for fund expenses? Yeah, so this is somewhat unique thing to spot ETFs because these ETFs are structured as grant to trust. Um, so obviously like sponsors like, you know, ARK and, you know, Fidelity, they need to have money to kind of run their fund, right? They had to pay the salaries and et cetera. Right. In order to do that, they have to dispose of like Bitcoins throughout the year to, to kind of come up with the cash inflow. So whenever they do that, that results in a capital gain or loss event for the shareholders because whenever you spend something like Bitcoin, there's yeah. a difference between how much you paid for it and, and the market value. So if there's a profit, um, there's a gain at the fund level. And as an ETF shareholder, you had to report that gain based on your pro rata share of the fund that you own. But the trick here is that you had to report that gain, but the fund is not giving you the cash. They're not distributing that. Yeah. So I like to kind of call this like a hodling tax because generally speaking, like, you know, <laughs> hodling, hodling is completely tax free. Like if you're holding, you know, Bitcoin or even like any stock. Right. right. Uh, but if you're holding uh, a spot Bitcoin ETF fund, you had to keep. You had to pay this tax. Um, that's kind of something for you guys to know about. That's crazy. That's crazy. So everybody. So if you're new to the game and then you're like you're saying yourself that uh, that a you know an ETF could be very safe. Of course, you offload some of those uh, restrictions and the, and the things that you have to do as far as what you're holding on to it. That is true. But just like Sheehan said, and I've never heard of this until right now, there is a holding tax. That is probably what I will use in the description, the title for this actual video. So, Shean, that's interesting stuff and yet another reason why I think people should learn how to self-custody and cold storage devices, but that's another video. So, Shean, before we take off, any last uh, words of wisdom for the people out there getting into the space right now? Um, I think the the spot Bitcoin ETF, like uh, there are like, you know, legit use cases for using something like that, uh, especially if you want to buy... Uh, if you want to have exposure to crypto in a 401k, set by IRA, or any type of retirement account, uh, the, the yeah. spot Bitcoin ETF is a really good way to do go about that. Uh, but if you kind of want to kind of hold Bitcoin for the long run, the cheapest way for you to do is is, is self custody, uh, assuming you don't you know lose any seed phrase and stuff like that, or you don't compromise your seed phrase to a hacker. This is very true. <laughs> There's always the pros and the cons. So, Shian, thank you so much. All right, everybody. So, look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you want to follow Shihan, there's information be below in the description. That's it for today. So, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. Hope this helped. 
and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.